Thank you, Speaker. Last week, the publication of the latest unemployment figures for New South Wales saw the New South Wales Treasurer quoted in a number of articles attempting to spin them into a good news story. In the election of Newtown, a lot of people are now unemployed and many, many more are underemployed as a result of this pandemic. And it is not acceptable that the Liberal National Government is now putting their energy into misrepresenting the Im true impacts of this crisis rather than implementing immediate measures to address them. Yes, at first glance, the figures did appear to show that the level of unemployment in our state was not as low as expected, but the Treasurer and his team are certainly smart enough to know that they need to look a little bit closer at the data. What this latest data shows is that there is a job growth evident in the top line figures was entirely <coughs> driven by a surge in non-employees, that is self-employed people, owner managers who themselves have no employees, who work in an unincorporated enterprise. In short, that's a surge in gig workers. Let's not beat around the bush. Gig work sucks. By its very nature of insecure work with little to no wage or workplace protections and completely unequal business model where mega corporations profit from the exploitation of individuals, for almost everyone, gig work is the last resort. The term gig economy comes from the 2000, or arose from the 2009 global financial crisis as many workers found they lost permanent full-time employment and turned to sporadic, casual and freelance work or gigs. Now let's be very clear, a drastic growth in gig economy employment is not a win. It is a failure. For the most part, apps and platforms that facilitate gig work use the cloak of innovation and progress to reintroduce archaic and outdated labor practices, circumventing minimum wage rates and removing employee safety nets. By classifying their workers as independent contractors, these mega corporations absolve themselves of any responsibility for providing access to standard employment or entitlements. Someone always has to pay for cheap capitalism. And that's the riders and the drivers, and those who are exploited by the profit above all else business model. model. Now these companies shirk their responsibility to pay fair wages and conditions, and governments let them get away with it. California has finally taken up the fight to regulate this exploitative industry, and we need to do the same here. I want to thank and give a shout out to the TWU for shedding light on the reality of gig workers in this state, in supporting those forced into the, this type of work, and in advocating strongly for protections. I have seen members of the TWU engaging with drivers of delivery trucks, delivery bikes along King Street, and I give them credit for being committed to organizing and building union power for these workers. Now, you can talk all you want about the freedom of working for yourself, but it's not what being a gig worker is about for the vast majority. Working for yourself is one thing, but having no choice and being exploited is an entirely different thing. Nobody chooses a job where they have no protections, no sick leave, no recreation leave, no superannuation, no set hours, no award rates, no access to working comp workers' compensation. Nobody gives up those things willingly. There is no question that COVID has exasperated this existing inequality in our society, pushing hundreds hundreds of thousands of people into insecure and unpaid work. And it's just another example where it's certainly something that governments need to be taking up. The electorate of Newtown has double the amount of 20 to 34 year olds than, any, than other areas of New South Wales. We have a huge number of young people and students, international and domestic, along with new migrants on temporary visas. These people are the most vulnerable and at risk of exploitation through the gig economy. These are the people who are most affected by this pandemic and are most likely to have missed out on government and crisis support. Many people who are international students and others on temporary visas have no choice but to rely on getting money as gig workers because governments have failed to do the humane thing and offer financial support to them during this pandem pandemic. Now, as more and more people face the loss of work and are at risk of going into increasing debt, we need to be calling out the neoliberal spin and demanding that this government takes firm action right now to ensure a just society where no one is too poor to be able to live. Securing workers' wages and conditions is protecting wages and conditions for everyone in this state. But it is not just about workers' rights. We need to be pushing for universal housing, a basic guarantee of income, addressing systemic racism, prioritising community care and wellbeing, and making sure that we are acting to limit the impacts of the impending climate emergency. I thank the member for Newtown, the Parliamentary Secretary.